Okay, so getting ready to start the next project. We are going to be turning this into this. Um, I'm going to build the frame with two by fours and then I'm just gonna hang it on the wall like you do with those stoneware hearths. I've measured everything out that I'm gonna need and just drawn it up and it is a very sad basic <laughs> blueprint. Um, but what I'm going to do is just build the frame out like this. It will have one that goes along the bottom. And the whole thing is going to be framed around itself with uh, you know, a few extra supports supporting that top um, part of the mantle, the shelf part. So the challenge here is going to be getting the frame to be the perfect um, distance in from this corner. So when I add drywall, I can get a flush lie right here. Um, that I can then mud and tape. Just wanted to give a few quick thoughts on uh, doing these projects at home. You know, I've heard so many people say, I'm just not handy, I'm not, I'm not good with stuff like this, and you know, I don't think anybody is until they do it. But it's a lot like going to uh, like the gym for the first time, right? You know, you might feel a little intimidated going to like a Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, but the workers are always very helpful ask them questions, they really do like to take their time and share their, you know, insights. And uh, and then YouTube, you know? There's so much stuff to watch on YouTube to see how to get it done. And then go do a small project, you know? Give yourself small wins in the beginning on DIY projects, whether it's painting a wall, building a shelf. That'll give you some confidence to kind of know that, you know what, I, I can figure this stuff out, so. I just got back from Lowe's and I'm getting ready to start this project. I gotta prep the area before we can really dive into it. So what I'm about to do right now, pulling these moldings off at the bottom is probably gonna cause enough damage that um, I have to do the project once I pull those off. So. so moving along here, I'm measuring out the wood now to cut out for the top and bottom of the two by fours that will make up the beginnings of the frame. And the way I wanted to measure that out was I'm gonna be putting drywall on either side of those uh, pieces of two by four. So this drywall is 5 8 inches wide and that'll be on both sides. So 5 8 inches times two is one inch and two eighths. So I, whatever I measure on the width of this box here, this fireplace box, whatever the width is from here to here, I minus one, eight, one inch and two eighths from it and that's how wide I'm gonna cut that two by four so that I have a perfectly flush lie when I screw in those drywall pieces to the wood. When it comes to wood, not all two by four planks are created equal. Um, a lot of them will have a rock in them or they're just you know distorted a little bit, they're not straight. I wanted the top and bottom ones at least to be as straight as possible since the top will be making the shelf. So I laid out the pieces of wood at Lowe's before I bought them and just made sure there was nothing crazy. People ask why we didn't just pay our builder to do this stuff. Honestly, one, not everybody does the custom work that you know you want to do. Um, and two, at Woven Nook, we really do like to hack the prices. We like to find a way to live in houses and have decorations and have things that we want for prices that not everybody can afford. These cuts are really precise, so I'm really taking my time to make sure that the saw is going to end right where I marked the wood here. Off by about a centimeter. Okay, that should do it. So we'll see what it looks like once it comes time to mud and tape it, but I think we got the perfect distance, so. I'm gonna go cut the other piece and then I'm just gonna cut everything and start piecing it together. Okay, so I'm just laying these out now so that I can mark on this board and on that board where exactly I need to drill. And I just have kind of put that there as a placeholder so that that will be perfectly in its place as well as right here, same thing. These are just placeholders to keep this top beam exactly where it needs to be so that I can get an accurate measurement for where these are going to line up with the fire fireplace box here. The reason why I didn't just measure it out perfectly is when I measured everything out, the fireplace was like a half an inch off this way. So I didn't want to go off that. I want to make sure that I place these boards exactly where I want them to go um, with the edge of the fireplace here. So I am now going to go ahead and just screw these vertical ones in. One thing that's a lifesaver 
is this uh, magnetic screw guide that goes on your screw like that and that slides up and that makes it so when you're putting pressure down it won't like you know where you put pressure down and it flies off to the side and you can smash your hand in the wall or whatever this just helps keep it on the end of the bit there so All right, I'm gonna measure up this middle piece that goes from here to here. And then one piece that go vertical from right there to there, right there. And then I'll drill those in and we'll be done on this. Uh, from there, it's time to mount it to the wall. I went to Home Depot, sorry, Lowe's, and I bought these, they're $2 a piece. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna use my stud finder to identify where good spots would be to uh, use these braces to attach this to the wall and mount it so that it's nice and firm on there and never has any movement in it. And uh, then I'm gonna mount it to the wall and from there, it's a matter of starting the drywall process. Alrighty guys, that's ridiculously strong. All right, so we're all bracketed in. We've got this bracket here. So these are definitely the heavier duty brackets here and those are very heavy duty. I'm not using this top hole because I've got these top screws right here. Then I hit every other corner and a couple on the sides here. Yeah, now it's really just time to drywall, tape, mud, and then paint. I am just finishing some of the drywall pieces. It's now nighttime and uh, here is where we're at so far. That's probably the most stressful part for me was getting the drywall to be perfectly lined up with the existing wall. And now that's done, I'm just gonna finish the top and the inside of the firebox. And from there, I'm gonna put on the plastic uh, corners. All right, so starting out on day two, as you can see, Katie got pretty excited and wanted to try out some of her decorations on the mantle. Um, I'm gonna pull those off. I just finished putting down plastic everywhere on the floor because I'm gonna start working with the mud. Um, I'll show you just kind of the last couple things I did before starting this step. Okay, so these are rounded corners. Uh, I believe they're referred to as bullnose. Um, I went super overkill. I don't want these to be moving at all. Um, a lot of people will just use the mud. They'll put it underneath and then stick this on top and then use the mud to hold it in place. I've seen it done with staples, just a few staples to hold it in place. I screwed it in all over the place, and because I'm going with a thicker mud, these screws will be totally hidden. For this joint mud, I'm just using the plus three joint compound. All right, so I'm just taking a little bit of the compound, pressing it into the joint, and then just scraping it off. Just trying to fill that gap as best as possible. All right, next I'm just gonna put one more layer so that I can prepare to put the tape on and then these will be done and ready to just dry out. So you can do a wet or a dry application with this tape. This tape is really just kind of like a thick paper. I'm gonna get it wet. I feel like it helps adhere a little bit better to the mud. All right, so all you do is you just take this uh, paper joint tape, measure out how long you want it to be, tear it off. I just got it wet. I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit of that water. Okay. Just try to make that a little bit cleaner there. All right, I'm just gonna stick it onto that joint. Press it a little bit. Now I'm gonna use my knife to kind of just work out any air pockets and really press it into the mud. And I'm gonna start in the middle to do it so I'm not working any air pockets in the middle of the tape. I am gonna hold this tape up here to make sure I don't pull it off. I'm just gonna start here, give it a firm, nice grip, grab my hawk, okay. Scrape off that mud. Now that it's pressed down there, I can just work my way up here. Same thing, just a nice firm press. If you can't tell, I'm not professional at doing this. I would never try to go and get a bunch of work of taping and drywalling an entire house. My hope with these projects is just to show you guys that with little experience and just a little bit of motivation, you can save yourself a ton of money and you can have your house look the way that you always wanted it to.
All right, quick update. I just finished mudding and installing the corners, the bullnose corners. And uh, pretty much what I did is I just caked on a ton of mud. And then when I pressed on the corners, the mud kind of held it in place. And um, whoa, what are you thinking about? He likes it. Do you like it? All right, so the next step here is going to be mudding all of these. Again, I'm gonna put a huge glob of mud right here on this corner so I can have something to file down. They do make corners for this, but this is a half size bull nose, not a full size, and I couldn't find the half size. I'm gonna put mud in these cracks to create that perfectly flush lie with the wall. And then I'll mud all of this, get all the screws hidden underneath the mud. And then after that, it will be time to just let it dry, get the coat on everything here with mud to give it that texture we're looking for. And then after that, it will be time to paint. As you can see, this was a seam before from this wall to here. And I, what I did is I filled the little crack with mud and then I taped on top. The seams are really nice. Up here is turning out pretty good too. I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire layer of mud here and get ready so that I can sand it all down and get it all to the perfect texture that we want. So here we are. Mud is applied to the whole thing. Didn't take me too long, maybe about an hour. It's not perfect. I think with a sander and in some touch-ups so that we can get that to be really smooth and looking the way we want it to. All right, so sanding day. The mud is all dried. I went ahead and purchased this topper right here for this uh, sanding tool. And then I had a broomstick in the garage that I used this stick on. I'm using a fine sanding material. This is technically considered 220. Why am I doing this instead of just sanding it all down by hand? Well. In my experience, I've tended to spend too much time sanding in one spot and then I try to even it out in another spot. So I figured for this fireplace, I'm just gonna do really big long strokes to hopefully keep everything more even rather than sanding here and then working my way over and potentially sanding too much in one spot over another. I should probably be wearing a mask. This is definitely dusty. So it's time for me to take this corner, sand it down to be the right shape. I'm just gonna do it with 220 by hand. The corners are done. As you can see here, just kinda got it nice and round. There's Katie and Smith in the background. But um, I'm really happy, happy with the seams where it ties into the wall. This thing is mudded, sanded, totally ready to go for the finishing touches. I'm gonna to prime it today. I'm just using normal paint primer as per the instructions on this Roman clay. Um, we had a little bit of a delay because Katie was trying to decide on what color she wanted. It's called Washi by Portola Paints. As you can see, there's Portola Paints. This is what we're working with today. And um, pretty much what I did is I bought this little pack of plastic uh, putty knives. And I'm gonna apply with these. You can use metal, but sometimes metal uh, putty knives, as many of you know that have worked with them, they tarnish. In my experience, it's always worth taking your time to do the prep work, like the taping lines and whatnot. Take your time to do it, because if you do it right, then you won't have to go back and touch up, and it'll save you a lot of time. I'm gonna go ahead and set this camera up and just get after it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm establishing the first coat right now. All I'm doing is just taking this, scraping on a little bit like that, and then just scraping it on from side to side mo movements. You can go vertical, you, it's really up to you how you want it to look. Katie said she likes the more side to side look. So really I'm just scraping it on. Obviously anywhere you overlap is gonna be darker than the spots that only have one pass. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I'm gonna cover this entire thing in one layer and then do it two more times probably. All right, so I have finished a first and second coat on here. We'll probably be done with just two coats. Here's the difference between two coats versus one coat here. And uh, again, if you could see this in person, you'd see it's a little bit too 
crazy um, on the one coat. However, on the two coats, it's just this perfect little bit of dynamic. So I think we're gonna stick with just two coats. I've got to do this side and this side and paint these black behind. So it'll be um, bordered by two black walls. There's Katie and the baby. And, um, and then this project will be wrapped. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with just a smaller brush and do around the edges and just kind of the more like detail stuff. Fireplace is finally done and <laughs> ready to show. What do you think? I'm obsessed with how it turned out. It looks so good. My theme for this room, as per Jordan's request, was a moody study. <laughs> and I wanted it to just be very earthy and organic and just warm and inviting, trying to tie everything in that he's wanting and my own vision for the room. So I knew I kind of wanted darker colors. I wanted different textures and I guess getting into specifics of the room, we went with iron ore on both sides of the Roman clay fireplace, which is one kind of organic texture I wanted to incorporate. And we have a brown leather sofa that's more of a, a muted, worn leather versus like a cognac, a more vibrant color, which I really loved and I felt like fit the space perfectly. And then of course we tied it in with so many different fun textiles. We have our taft rug. We have a couple of our velvet lumbars in our olive green, which is my personal favorite. I also feel like it kind of gives that old vintage. Totally. Yeah, that um, velvet, vibe. rich, earthy color. And then we have a few of our Moroccan covers as well. I wanted to incorporate some greenery. It's almost spring here right now, so I added some fresh blooms onto the table, some old vintage prints, and then we also have this gorgeous dark Carrera marble coffee table that you can just tell is like this heavy, solid, beautiful piece that I feel like just totally completes the room. Katie crushed it. I love this room. The vibe is perfect. I wanted a place to bring my kids, to read books, to have good conversations with, for our family to gather and I think that's everything I wanted and more, and it has the Katie flair to it, which is way more aesthetic <laughs> than my eye would ever be. And uh, honestly, just can't be happier with the way you designed it. And I think Katie's pretty happy with the fireplace too. He did an amazing job. <laughs> so we'll keep you guys updated on future projects we have coming up on the house, as well as this room. We're gonna add probably some floating shelves. We might be painting this whole room. <laughs> we'll let you know. Let us know what you think in the comments, what we should do. And for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.